Hi everybody, my name is Naya and today we are going to be going through the six things you need to do before starting coding bootcamp. So you make sure you just hit the ground running and have the most enjoyable, smooth process as possible switching into software engineering. So let's get to it. Number one, the first thing you need to do before coding bootcamp is quit your job it is i truly want want to say impossible to have a job whether it be full-time part-time contract just weekends it is impossible to have a job and still go through coding boot camp with ease and without falling behind in any way so you need to quit your job because even if you're just only working weekends you need those weekends for me coding boot camp was about 40 hours of class time so we would you know be in class or be working on lessons from nine yeah nine to five and sometimes actually like nine to six depending on the day but if you're you know rusty on something or you're not understanding something that's more hours you need to put in if it's you know project week or you're you know building an app or you know enhancing your portfolio through the boot camp that's a weekend you need to spend really putting your all into these projects into these apps into these lessons to make sure you don't fall behind and you have the best shot possible of leaving that boot camp with a job and so it is it, impossible to have a job now I know you know people you know some people watching will be like oh well I had a job and you know I did it because of X Y. like that's great it is but uh, it is don't have a job just don't have a job I didn't have a job um, I actually you know moved into my parents house but like that's all that's gonna come later but just don't have a job Please. Number two, the second thing you really need to do before starting coding bootcamp is save up money. Now, you know, you don't have a job now, so how are you going to support yourself? So you need to have money saved up, either money saved up or have a spouse that is willing to, you know, now be kind of like the sole, um, income provider or you have you know parents you can go to friends etc people who can help support you now because you don't have a job and you shouldn't try to start getting one while you're in boot camp so you need income somehow coming from somewhere and so let's say you don't have those other options whether it be parents or a spouse that is in a position where they can support both of you and everything you need to have saved up your money before starting boot camp how much money that depends on the length of the boot camp because my boot camp was four months but i have seen others that are six to a year most boot camps are either three to four months six months a year so that's all going to depend on the length of the program and it's even better if you are single because then if you do have a spouse then that you know it sucks having to have somebody else be the person to kind of pick up you know to kind of um hold up the fort you know for you guys but you know that is what marriage is about but i'm just saying save up as much money as you can before starting your boot camp number three the third thing you need to do is write a letter to your friends and your family during these next few months you are going to be unavailable in a way that I'm thinking most people are not used to. And I'm talking about the people close to you. If your family are, you know, they're used to seeing you every weekend, your, you know, your spouse is used to seeing you, you know, every day, every other day. You have friends, you have, you know, siblings. You need to write them a letter to just one thank them for supporting you on this new journey that you're on and to just ask and beg for their patience with you while you go through this because it is so hard for you but it's also so hard for the people around you because now they have to shift their life because they're not used to you know going days without seeing you going days or weeks without talking to you so you need to be able to give them a letter and ask them that whenever they're frustrated with you or whenever they feel lonely or anything like 
like that to read that letter and to just remember the big picture in all of this and why you're doing this because at the end of the day it's for all of you guys so just try to just prepare them as much as possible beforehand tip number four so you just wrote a letter to your friends and your family now write a letter to yourself yes you because you are going to get so frustrated during this journey. You are going to at some point think you are just not cut out to be a software engineer or a web developer or a data scientist, etc. You are going to think you're just not cut out for it and feel like the dumbest person in the room and feel like you know you can't even ask certain questions because they're just too you know dumb or you should have known this already and all of this. Write a letter to yourself and thank yourself in that letter for having the strength and the courage to go on this process and demand a better life for yourself. And then just give yourself some kindness, some love. Just say, look, if you're reading this, you know, you obviously are going through it right now. Like, keep going. Like, you are a strong person. Odds are, this isn't the toughest thing you've ever gone through through your life. Odds are, you have faced adversity throughout your life for something. Remember that. Remember that you got through X, Y, and Z. And so, you can definitely get through this because where that other thing, you know, was something that was, you know, upsetting and it was negative, this is positive and will enhance your life so much in the coming months and years and so write a letter to yourself and make sure you go back to it when not if when you just feel like you just can't continue on this journey read it read it again and again okay it is so important so important be kind to yourself and just be patient. So before getting to tip number five, I'm going to ask for you to please hit the subscribe button if you've liked what you've heard so far, if this, you know, isn't your first video, and hit the like button if you like the tips you've heard so far and if you'd like me to produce more content like this because I'm really trying to make sure I am being a resource for you all to make sure that more people are able to have a smooth transition in this new career path. So please help me out by doing that and let's get back to it. So tip number five, establish your own working space during this coding bootcamp. You want to make sure that you have a space where you have really like full control over what's around you. You have full control over the volume, who is in and out of it and everything because you are going to be spending countless amount of hours hours going through it with these lessons with these projects with these teachers with these webcasts with the like it is just so much and so you want to know that when you sit in that chair that you know is part of your workspace you can get into a certain mindset and you can you know just block everything else out and focus on the tasks at hand for me i had moved back in with my parents so that i wouldn't have you know bills to worry about and you know i had quit my job didn't have a job and so i was relying on them you know for that support and all of that and for me my you know space was the basement and that's where I did all of my work that's where you know I rested and all of that and if I didn't have that it would have been very difficult to have had as smooth a as, as smooth of an experience that I did because y'all I have a seven person household the youngest person in my house is two years old the oldest person in my house is 82 years old. So it would have been very difficult to keep on focusing and getting through it. And so even if you have, you know, a one bedroom apartment, a studio apartment, and you live with a spouse or a girlfriend or just another person, just put aside a side, a corner for yourself that will be your own sanctuary. Buy some dividers that, you know, now you can block off, you know, a certain, you know, side of the room or like now when you're there, then, you know, people can't see you and everything because it's also hard to work when you know people are looking at you and all this. So just try to find a space for yourself 
that you can just devote everything to. That way, like I said, you sit in that chair and the whole world disappears, you are working. So that is tip number five. So tip number six, y'all, break up with him. Break up with her, break up with them. If they are not a supporting partner, you are going to have such a rough time during this experience. Now, I'm focusing more on the people who are, let's say, dating someone. I'm speaking less about spouses. But, you know, if you have a spouse and, you know, you've been thinking about it for a while, like, you wouldn't mind to say do not break. Like, do what you need to do. Do what you need to do. But no, overall, I am, you know, kind of joking, kind of not. If I... If I think about the relationships I've been in in the past, this is, we're getting, we're getting deep, y'all. If I think about the relationships I've been in in the past, there are some that I know I would not have succeeded the way I did if I had been with them during this process. I would not have because the amount of support it takes for you to go through this you are not going to be as, you know, attentive to your partner. You're not going to be as as freely available to them as you may have been before. And it's going to be hard for them watching you pay more attention to your computer screen and your peers on the other side of it and your teachers on the other side of it than them when they're just four feet away from you. It's going to be difficult. So if you have a relationship that you, you know, has has been rocky and, you know, you know, I know some people are watching this and they know that their partner is not a supportive person. One, you should kind of break up with them. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not. I'm just saying the six tips, you know, that really I believe from my from my experience would help you succeed throughout this transition. If you are not with a supportive partner, it's going to be so difficult for you. We always said during my coding boot camp, one of my instructors would constantly say, the spouses are the real MVPs of this coding boot camp because it's them that now have to take on the extra weight of, you know, being the sole provider because, you know, you quit your job. <laughs> and it's them that has to, you know, they support you and to see you frustrated and, you know, see you upset and have to really, you know, encourage you to keep going it's them that helps you keep your head straight so you can have this better life for you and them and the people you care about and so if you are with a person who isn't that for you and by now you know I'm sure you know if they are that or not if if you don't know because you know maybe it's been three minutes since y'all you know sat at the table you're going to know very quick once you start this boot camp if they're supportive or not and if you see that they're not supportive like when you're in the boot camp you see that you are now falling behind you are now finding it so difficult to concentrate because of this I am a person who always says to advocate for yourself first. Put your own mask on before tending to somebody else. And I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. And like I said, half of it, you know, is kind of a joke, but half of it isn't. You need a support system, okay? So make sure you have that. So, Thank you so much for getting through this with me. Please subscribe if you know, you've know you liked the videos you've seen so far and look forward to more because I really want to expand this community and allow YouTube to just you know show my videos to more people. So thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you soon.